Hello community, so great that you are back. We have a brand new phase transition that we discovered in reasoning. So let's talk about Kona, the quantum field theoretical entropy approach, everything that is new in AI and welcome to my channel Discover AI. So let's start. So whenever we train an LLM with some reinforcement learning here with verifiable rewards, we have three problems. We have a two-stage learning curve, we have a V-shaped trajectory, and we do encounter catastrophic forgetting if we do supervised fine-tuning. Now, here we have now a research paper that is now from theoretical physics, from quantum field theory and AI. And they discover about learning at criticality. And they want here an LLM model, an AI model that does theoretical physics. Now, before they can deploy this, they have to make sure that the LLM reasoning process is absolutely mathematical correct. So what they do, they say, hey, how can we build a simpler model? Let's build a concept network where we map the complexity of a transform architecture to a simpler network architecture, the concept network. Now, you know an LLM does not generate text with a uniform uncertainty. It has a process, you know, next token prediction, so you have a sequence of high confidence, low entropy tokens, that is punctuated by key decision points of high uncertainty. And this is now the new definition of a concept. A coherent sequence of tokens generated between two such decision points. And each of those stable text chunks whatever they may be, form now a single node in our new abstract network. What a simple idea. Yes, you know in QN you already implemented it partially. Have a look at this. This is so easy. Your decision. No, this is a high entropy minority token that forks here the path. This on the other side is a low entropy majority token following the path. So whenever you have here your reasoning path, careful when you train here all the tokens on reinforcement learning or maybe there's a more wise decision to go here reinforcement learning on the forking tokens. Now if you want to learn more about high entropy tokens and entropy call-ups and everything those are the three videos I would recommend. But let's come back to the theoretical paper here on quantum field theory and AI. The researchers noticed there is a second order phase transition now in the AI system whenever they employ it here for a quantum field theoretical approach here for some famous integral the higher solutions. Think about this here, but also in the simplest case. Look, if you just say, hey, solve 12 plus 98, no? and you look here at the reasoning traces, and then you just look here really down here in detail, and you examine here the high entropy decision points in the reasoning trace of this LLM. And the probability distribution over the next token can be real broad. For example, here, since this high probability candidate has a probability of 0.68. The other one with the has only a probability of 0.1. So you see the competing forking tokens define here the branches of the network. So this is a completely different way to see this, but a very powerful way, because guess what? If we abstract this further, what we get is exactly here a conat. So where you have here a note, this is for example your question and an answer, and then you have a stochastic path on this new network. So a concept network. Now it is easy. The reasoning process is simple. Yeah? It's a stochastic traversal that is akin to a random walk within an underlying network of this particular concept. But we want to train it. So what we do, reinforcement learning, GRPO, great. What does it do? It modifies now the transition probabilities within the LLM's implicit concept network, optimizing here the pathways from the question to the answer concept. Such a simple idea. Because, you know, we do face here a central dilemma. We have here only the indispensable reinforcement learning fine-tuning, so we operate here with exceptional few examples, especially here in theoretical physics. And now the question is, can this advanced AI model here really genuinely acquire the algorithmic understanding for a real robust generalization of the new characteristic of unseen data? And this was the main question the researcher looked here for AI for quantum field theory. And they introduced here learning at a criticality. And yes, you guessed it already. This criticality is, of course, here where we have our phase transition in the learning scheme. And this is not only limited to physics. 
So let's have a look. If you look now at the training dynamics here of a minimal concept network, our CONAT, and you look here at the accuracy, you do see this behavior. Or if you have here the length variance, you see here a lambda behavior. This means we do have a kind of a phase transition, especially this here is taken here. If you have the transition from the normal to the superfluid helium phase, you can beautifully model this with an AI system. And this is exactly what we also use in many electron systems, in condensed matter, understanding the phenomena like a high temperature superconductivity, where we have to calculate our Feynman diagrams for the Fermi surface complexities. And you know why? Because the AR models, we hope, we pray, that they will simulate non-analytical solutions. And you know, we have diagrammatic Monte Carlo provide crucial estimates for the higher order terms, but can we employ AI for quantum physics? This is absolutely fascinating. But now, now here, let's come back because we want to apply this knowledge now to artificial intelligence itself. So let's go to an extension of this idea that comes here from quantum field theory. And let's say, okay, so it transforms here the concept net from a model of an isolated skill acquisition for our Feynman diagrams into an ideal theoretical laboratory for studying your general skill integration. So we take this idea and we play with this idea. So let's have a look. And this is now our main new paper of today, September 28, 2025. How LLMs learn to reason. And you would say, hey, what a simple topic. Yeah, but it's a complex network perspective to which right now, of course, we have here at Department of Modern Physics or Institute of Theoretical Physics or Fundamental Physics and Mathematical Science or EI for the Science Institute the Center for Theoretical Physics, and yes, absolutely, this is a beautiful paper. You have to have a look at this. Now, the first question is, can we do this simplification here with a concept map? So let's have here a real LLM, and let's have a look at the behavior of a real LLM, and just compare it now to our CONAT. And interestingly, stunningly, CONAT now reproduces here the key macroscopic signatures of a deep seek R1 distilled Q1 1.5 billion free trainable parameter. You have a look at this, look, even our V-shape form, the responsive length is there. So yeah, this is a simulation that is now mimicking exactly the behavior that we are interested in to learn from our LLM, but now in a much simpler concept network. Now, you know, we have two signatures, and this is here that we have a very steep reward, and then we are plateauing out, and I already mentioned here the second one, this is here the V-shape evolution of the correct response length. And it works just great. And there is a topological origin of the V-shape that is now explainable. For us here, just, if you have you read the paper, you get a detailed explanation of it just here in this video. Let me just say, we have islands here. We have skill islands that are disconnected. And now during the learning process of this concept network, we see something amazing gonna happen. Look, when we step here in our learning, okay, we see that, yeah, okay, this is here a particular domain, this is a particular domain knowledge. So you see, we have tomatic clusters that are forming. At the training step 50, you see, almost all the clusters are already formed for their particular distinct solutions here. We do have a cluster representation. And now, there is now the discontinuity, there's the phase transition. If we continue, you see the system has to learn, but it cannot have here a further fragmentation, but it has to learn combining now all the different clusters. And this is here exactly what you see. We are weaving them into a single expansive concept map. But you know what's amazing? This is not the end. So the more training step you do, this simple simplification of a concept net really works great for us to understand what is happening in an LLM. Now, it is absolutely important that you understand persistent sparsity of our network. So the web here that just showed you here, this one, the concept web, is now, it remains persistently sparse and absolutely surprisingly with an average degree stabilizing near two. This is, wow, think about it. So this means our sparse web structure, if we build now the reasoning chain, we, need, we have to have longer reasoning chains, and it is not 
a mesh. It is not an interconnected mesh connecting everything with everything. Unfortunately, because we have such a limited rank, we have to go here with, if you want, a tree-like structure. This is a fascinating insight into our current reasoning procedures of our current AI systems. And I think this is now here, this, this graph shows you here that the concept web emerges now. So it's not anymore a concept network. Now we build here a complete web. Why? Have a look at this. We have in orange here the cluster number and in blue we have the maximum cluster size. So the cluster number is easy. Cluster number is here from 0 to 125. The moment we start with our training steps, the eye is trained and it discovers here multiple thematic clusters. Look, yeah, no, more, more, more. 125 clusters it identifies. And then this is it. This is the maximum amount of fragmentation that is easy, fast, immediately done. But now the continuous learning process now is you have to combine those clusters, an interdisciplinary approach. So this means the cluster number has to go down because clusters are now absorbed in other clusters. And we learn now that if you have now two clusters into one, we integrate this knowledge in a particular way. Now, if we look at the blue at a maximum cluster size, no? or maybe let's do this at first here. This peak is so dominant. The system has exhausted here the low-hanging fruits of simple isolated solution and has reached here the state of maximal fragmentation of our little knowledge islands. And now the next learning step is it has to combine it. So this means if you look now at the maximum cluster size, the cluster size has to go up because now clusters are absorbed in other clusters and we have mega clusters. And you see this and after an extensive growth phase, we are also plateauing out like here with the cluster number beautifully. So this means this is now the formation of a concept web in our context network. But the more we train it, we have now a network that is dominated by a large interconnected structure. This is now the learning made visible. But, you know, there's something else we can do. If we have the single questions that have a different complexity. And you see, given the training step, the more you train, the better the network will become or the, the web will become. So you see here, typical here, the behavior of a phase transition. Look, we are at zero and then chuck, we are at 100%. Why is this happening? Now, the question four is a very simple question. Eh? And you just have combined, I don't know, two clusters together, form a little bit of a mega cluster, and then the knowledge is in this new cluster and the system can immediately solve it. The more the complexity increases here with question 22, the next one, you see, it needs a more training step. It needs to fusion more clusters together. It needs to learn more of the interdisciplinary nature of the clusters, and then it can solve it. So we do have a continuous phase transition. This is something beautiful, and it is composed of discrete, sharp learning events rather than a uniform gradual process. And this is beautifully visualized with this idea of the knowledge clusters. So here we have it. The model gets now smarter and smarter with the training by connecting more and more of its isolated network and knowledge chunks. But because it learns this connection in the most efficient way possible, remember the rank is near 2, the connectivity is near 2, this means we do stay, even with a global knowledge network, in a tree-like structure or a chain-like structure. So we fail because what we want is a densely connected knowledge mesh. But we do not achieve this with our current reinforcement learning technologies. Why? Because we just found out in this video with this new paper, the connectivity is pin near 2. And now this explains exactly what I showed you here in this video a month ago, why GPT-5 fails with complex tasks. This is now here the mathematical explanation of what we already found out a month ago empirically and also here where I showed you GPT-5 is not able to do BHD science because exactly of this. So this means now 
from a pure graph theoretical point of view, where we come from a quantum field theoretical approach in theoretical physics, and we apply this now to artificial intelligence, we see that the sparsity of the conceptual network implies a low redundancy, an absolute fragility, and a critical vulnerability. And this is where I started the video and I told you we have three problems. And now we understand why we have those problems. So you see now why models have formed a concept web via reinforcement learning by verifiable rewards, and they are so susceptible to the catastrophic forgetting when they are subsequently fine-tuned. Because now we understand that this is a topological failure, because we are cutting off the bridge-like connections. So whenever you start here with a supervised fine-tuning and then a reinforcement learning, you see what's happening? Before the supervised fine-tuning, you have in your complex knowledge network here a connection, unfortunately a tree-like connection. But if we apply now supervised fine-tuning, what we do, we just cut these connections. And therefore we can lose complete branches of our interdisciplinary knowledge. And then what is happening if we do, in addition, reinforcement learning here with a specific reward system, then we're repairing those again. This is crazy. With supervised fine-tuning, we're causing the structure to fragment. And then with reinforcement learning here, we just build it back together. And the paper shows you this in a beautiful way. It explains to you why this is happening in supervised fine-tuning and reinforcement learning and how to optimize your reinforcement learning. So what we have achieved today? A beautiful study introduced the sparse concept net theory to explain here the puzzling behaviors if we do reinforcement learning by verifiable uh, reward training, including, as I told you, a two-stage learning curve, V-shaped response curve, and a vulnerability to catastrophic forgetting if we do a supervised fine-tuning at the beginning. And now this explains it is because of the formation of a sparse concept web. And now we understand if we do this, we cut the critical bridge-like connections from our knowledge islands. So therefore, the next great challenge in AI will be to develop the tools to empirically map this emergent concept web directly from the latent states of a production scale, LLM, because remember, we used here a concept map and a concept web as a kind of a simplification. And now that we understand the mechanism, what is happening and why it is happening, we have now to go from the little complexity model to the full-scale complexity model, our transform architecture, and implement it there and prove it there and find a solution over there. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like kind videos like this, hey, why not subscribe? And I'll see you in my next one.